So this video, chapter two, section four, deals with circles. And we're gonna just go ahead and start defining all of the definitions that we need. So let's start off with the definition of the circle. So all points on a circle are at the same distance from a fixed point. which we call the center. The distance from the center to a point is called the radius. So if I just draw a circle right here, and I'm at the center, this distance from here to any point on the outside of the circle is called the radius. And then if we go through the entire circle and through the middle. So I'll use a different color here for that. This is called our diameter. Now, just remember the diameter is equal to two times the radius. All right, or another way to kind of write this just as a formula would be D equals 2R. Now, there are also certain types of lines that we associate with a circle. So like, for example, a chord is a line segment having its endpoints on the circle. So a picture of that would be something like this. So here's a circle. And this green line we would call a chord. All right. Now, a tangent line is a line that touches only once. So tangent lines touch the circle only once. Now, if you think about it, a tangent line, therefore, cannot be inside the circle. The tangent line is going to be outside of the circle. So, in red is our tangent line. And we do have one more type of line that we associate with circles, and this is called a secant line. So I'm going to use a different color for this. We'll use purple. So a secant line is similar to a chord in the sense that it touches the circle twice. However, it goes through the circle. So this is called a secant line. So a secant line is a line that passes through two points of the circle. So let's look at an example where we incorporate one of the very important properties of a tangent. So in the figure below, O is the center of the circle. And AB is the tangent line at B. If
angle OAB equals 35 degrees. Find angle AOB. So let me go ahead, let's draw this circle. So here's our circle. Remember, O is in the center. Now we have an angle and a tangent line. So the tangent line is right here. And remember, this tangent line is called AB. All right. Now, one of the important things about a tangent line is this. Tangent lines are perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of contact. And what that means is this. We can form a right angle because we know the tangent line and the radius that we can draw from the center to the point of contact of that tangent line will always form a 90 degree angle. So now what we can do is we can start to label a lot of this stuff, all right? We know that the angle of OAB, so anytime we use this notation here, the middle letter is where the angle is located. So the angle OAB, and I'm going to draw, I'll highlight this for us. So O, then AB, this angle on the inside is 35 degrees. All right? Now, because the center of O is OB, is, a, is the radius of the circle, a tangent is perpendicular to this, which means that this angle, and I'm going to try to use a different highlighter here. Let's see what would be a good one. I always go with this, this light violet. So I know the angle ABO. So here's A and then BO. That is 90 degrees, which means I can find what this angle is by understanding that the sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So here's what we have. The measure of OAB plus the measure of OBA is going to be 35 plus 90, which is a total of 125 degrees. Now, the sum of the angles inside of the triangle has to be 180. Therefore, the measure of angle AOB is going to equal 180 minus 125, which turns out to be 55 degrees. So we can use the property of tangent lines and understand that they will always be perpendicular to the radius drawn from the center to the point of contact. Now, the next thing I'd like to go over is circumference and area. The perimeter of a circle is called the circumference. Now we do have two formulas for this. C equals two pi r, or if you remember two times r is diameter, C equals pi times diameter. Now, 
The next formula I'm going to go over is the area of a circle. So the area of a circle is equal to pi times r squared. Now, whenever we use this formula, regardless of which one, all three, it's always good to use pi, which is approximately 3.1416. Now, just remember, anytime you use this decimal, you're giving an approximation. You're not giving an exact answer. All right, so real fast, keep it nice and simple, okay? If we wanted to find the circumference and area for the following circle, and like I said, I'm going to keep this nice and neat so we can do mental math. Here's our circle. Here's our diameter, and it's 10 feet, all right? So circumference is equal pi times diameter. So we're going to get C equals 3.1416 times 10. So our circumference is going to be 31.416 feet. But remember, this is an approximation, so... Make sure you use those approximation symbols. Now, an exact answer would just be C equals 10 pi. That would be the exact answer. All right? The area, pi r squared, so 3.1416 times 10 to the second. 10 to the second is 100. So the area approximately is 31, or I'm sorry, 314.16 square feet, or for an exact answer, 100 pi. Okay, for the next example, uh, I'm going to take it from your book, but I'm going to draw it a little bit different than your book has because it makes a little bit more sense when you see the whole picture. At least for me, it did. All right. So here's the example here. What we want to do is we want to find the formula for a machine. part with a quarter circle removed. All right, so here's what we're talking about here. It's a lot easier with a picture. First, oh, that first circle was terrible. All right, so here's my circle here. Now, I'm going to create a radius that extends out to the left and then to the right. And if I create a square out of this, here's what I have. All right, so this machine part is a square that we are going to be taking a quarter, quarter circle of it and remove it. So we're removing this part, and the part that we want to keep is up here. All right? All right, so let me just shade this in a little bit more. So this is the part that we're keeping. Now, within your textbook, this is what they show you. They just show you this part right here. They just show you the square and then the cutout part right here. So 
now, hopefully, you can see like where everything is coming from. All right. So from here, we're going to set up our formula for the perim perimeter because we're going to add two sides of the length to one fourth of the circumference of the circle with the radius s. What I'm saying here is this, all right? Our perimeter is going to equal 2s. That is coming from the fact that this radius in the big circle, in fact, let me just erase this. Let's get rid of this. This radius right here, I don't know why that goes away, is s, and that radius is s. All right? So this is, that means this side of the square is s, and so is this, because it's a square. So this 2s represents the two that I have highlighted right here. Plus, we're going to find the circular, circular section now. Now we know circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi times the radius. Well, in this case, the radius is the letter S. So we have 2 pi S, but since, we, since we're only taking away one fourth of the circle, we're going to divide it by four. So when everything is all said and done, the perimeter is going to equal 2s plus pi times s over 2. Now we can use that to our advantage to, for the area. So the area will be s to the second power minus pi s squared all over 4 by using the same exact setup that we had on the left. Area is going to be the area of the square, s to the second power, plus pi r squared. But remember, the area is pi r squared, but r is now the letter s. And you're only dividing it by 4. So that's how we got that formula there. So when you look at it, it's not as hard as what you think. You just got to walk yourself through it. And personally, I thought including the circle is a much better way of looking at this versus just the square itself and then trying to figure out what that arc is. And speaking of arc, that brings us into our next topic. Circular arcs and angles. And this will be the last section or last topic for this, for this section. So an arc... is part of a circle and an angle formed at the center by two radii is called a central angle. So for example, if I have a circle from A to B, this is called the arc. <clears throat> All right. Now, if I have that central angle, so O is in the middle. I have these line segments here. What we just found here is called a sector. And the angle that, this, that sweeps the sector is that central angle. Now, if we drew a chord And connect, and we just shaded that region that the chord makes. That is called a segment.
Now, we're going to define the inscribed angle. So an inscribed angle of an arc is one for which the endpoints of the arc are points on the sides of the angle and for which the vertex is a point of the arc. All right, it's a lot of words. Here's what it says. Here's a circle, all right? Now, we have this central angle that looks like this, okay? The inscribed angle would be this. I'll highlight it in red for us. So right here is that inscribed angle. All right. And the arc that it makes is called the intercepted arc. Now, anytime we talk about arcs, there are two ways that we measure arcs. So two ways to measure arcs slash angles. All right, actually, we're just gonna focus on angles. There are two ways to measure angles. The first, we're all familiar with this, the degree, like this would be 90 degrees. But the other way, and this is the way that we use all the time in trig and in calculus and basically all of math, it's called a radian, okay? So we need to define what a radian is. So if a central angle of a circle intercepts an arc equal in length to the radius of the circle The measure of the central angle is defined as one radian. All right, so here's a picture. Here's our circle. Here is our radius this distance if this distance which is the arc length equals the radius we call that one radian all right so this is r as well now the radius can be marked off along this along the circle using circumference and all circles
have a radius of 2 pi. I said that backwards. All circles of radius equal to 1 has a circumference of 2 pi. So we can use this to our advantage. If the circumference of a circle is 2 pi radians, and we know this has to equal 360 degrees because there's 360 degrees in a circle. If I divide both sides by 2, pi radians equals 180 degrees, which we can use as a conversion factor. We can also find out exactly the measure of one radian. One radian is equal to 57.3 degrees. Now, if you're wondering how I got that, pi radians equals 180. If we divide both sides by pi, you get one radian equals the 57.3. So we can convert any angle we want. So let's convert 135 degrees to radians. So we always start with what we know, 135 degrees. We're gonna multiply this by our conversion factor, which is up above, so I'm gonna rewrite it. Pi radians equals 180 degrees. So, we want to get rid of degrees, so 180 goes down below, pi radians goes upstairs, and remember, we don't want decimals, we want exact numbers. So, 135 over 180, as a reduced fraction, is 3 pi over 4 radians. And that's how we convert anything we want. Now, the one thing I am going to show you here is what we call a unit circle. Maybe you've heard of this before, maybe you haven't. But within a unit circle, basically, you're going to see this in trig. Let me move this down here. There we go. So on the right-hand side, actually here, we'll just zoom in. Hopefully it looks good on the screen. Hate these stupid ads. Ruins everything. Here's our unit circle. Cross the middle, that's our diameter. But then that 135, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe I could just take a picture of this and put it in our notes. That would be so much easier. Here's 135 degrees. And notice 3 pi over 4. So it's exactly what we calculated. So you can, using this unit circle, and you can use this now if you want, you can see the relationship between radians and then the degrees. So if I asked you, what is 45 degrees? Pi over 4 radians. What is 270 degrees? 3 pi over 2. All right? And that's going to be it for this video. See you in the next one.